Hi, everyone. You're very welcome. And I'm Stefan Lindeberg uh, at the University of Lund. Uh, we will have a, a seminar this afternoon on Paleolithic nutrition, uh, an update on clinical trials. Uh, we are particularly happy to have Professor Linda Frasetto from University of uh, uh, California, San Francisco, here. And uh, from my group, uh, we have Tommy Jönsson, uh, Mylan Fontes, and myself. Um, I will first uh, give an introduction. Uh, and uh, much of what I say regarding evolutionary aspects of health is in a book that uh, I published in 2010, Food and Western Disease. When you uh, consider dietary trends, you uh, are sometimes confused. And one of the reasons is that when you look at the plates, it's all often difficult uh, to see which is which diet. So, on this picture, we have a couple of um, different diet trends. And uh, 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 two weeks ago, I asked uh, a proponent of one of them to point out which is her diet, and she couldn't uh, do it. Uh, that was the Weight Watchers diet. Uh, the, the DASH diet should be this one. We're going to talk about the Paleolithic diet. Uh, sometimes it's called Paleo diet. And actually, uh, it's the most searched uh, diet uh, in 2013. So uh, for you in Sweden who are well known with Stone Age diet, because this is what it means. Paleolithic is the old Stone Age. Paleo is old in Greek, and lithos is uh, stone. For you, uh, it uh, will be interesting now to see a second wave uh, uh, coming from mainly the United States. The basis of our opinion with regard to food and health is problematic, uh, partly because physiology is complex. Sometimes I tell my patients, uh, I wish I had become a car mechanic instead, so I could give you uh, proper explanations of your problems. Uh, uh, so it's difficult from physiological studies to know what is good and bad uh, in, with regard to uh, diet. And then every week you discover new substances that you didn't know that they existed, which makes it even more complicated. In epidemiology, we have the problem of confounders. People who do not eat whole grains, they are different than those who do choose whole grains. Uh, so there's, there are many differences between such people, uh, which could explain differences in health on the long term. Controlled intervention trials can never be blinded, almost never. And uh, evolutionary biology is almost never applied, although everyone believes in it. So there's a lot of space for belief systems, uh, social media, bloggers, uh, trendsetters, and this has been the case for a long time. Uh, trendsetters like uh, John Harvey Kellogg, 100 years ago, has had more influence on uh, present uh, uh, opinions about uh, food and health than, for example, Charles Darwin. And of course, money plays a role as well. So, why consider evolution? Well, first, because it shaped the human species. Uh, I'm going to switch to another software and see if we can get it right. So I will show you the timeline, the last 200,000 years. Humans, uh, fully modern humans, as we are today, 
uh, emerged uh, around 200,000 years ago. So if you take uh, your mother and your grandmother and so on in a long row, and everyone does the same, every person on the planet now does the same, we end up 200,000 years ago in Africa. And this ancestor is the result of uh, millions of years of evolution, of course. Uh, when the ancestors of this, uh, these uh, humans were living as hunters and gatherers, they were eating uh, insects, larvae, uh, meat, uh, later fish, uh, root vegetables, uh, uh, other vegetables, fruit, berries, um, nuts, eggs, sometimes honey, sometimes. Perhaps more important is what they did not eat. They had never regular access uh, as, staple diet, as staple foods to uh, grains, dairy products, refined fat and sugar. And these provide 75% of the calories in Western countries today. And on top of that, we have a much higher salt intake uh, today. So we go on uh, around 150,000 years ago, we can say, this is very rough figures. This is just to get a, 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 a figure of it. We started uh, to spread across Africa and then later uh, further out in the world. And during this time, of course, there was uh, emergence of ethnic groups there was natural selection, which means elimination. And usually elimination means uh, conservation of uh, the, the winning concept that has been good uh, more or less always. 100,000 years ago, we came to the Middle East. And around 45,000 years ago, uh, um, most of the people in this room uh, we, our ancestors came from Russia to uh, northern Europe. Uh, and 7,000 years ago, uh, lactase persistence in adults emerged, uh, meaning that uh, uh, you could, as an adult, uh, drink milk, uh, cow's milk, for example. And this uh, probably emerged uh, in central Europe and uh, spread afterwards. But this does not mean uh, that we are fully adapted. So all these potential endocrine and metabolic effects of uh, dairy proteins, uh, if they cause disease in late age, uh, we certainly uh, did not have time during 7,000 years to fully adapt. But even if you would argue that we have fully adapted, then it's interesting to see, uh, okay, so we have adapted, but they who started drinking milk uh, two or three or four generations ago would be different. So then we should be curious to see uh, how do they differ. But that curiosity is uh, lacking. Uh, so I, uh, I'm very sad to say that 150 years after Charles Darwin wrote uh, The Origin of Species, most of uh, people dealing with these things do not even fully consider evolution. So there is a lack of curiosity. 6,000 years ago, agriculture came to Scandinavia. Uh, Ötzi, the Iceman, uh, died 3,500 years ago. Nefertiti, a little bit later. Pompeii eruptured, uh, erupted roughly 2,000 years ago, the Black Death 667 years ago, and now, 100 years ago, we have another epidemic, a new epidemic. And as I said, all this time we have ongoing natural selection. Uh, and for example, we as Europeans are slightly less prone to get diabetes. Uh, only 5% of us uh, get it, uh, while uh, among non-European populations, often the figures are higher. So, uh, 
John Allen wrote a very interesting paper in 1996 with the title The Non-Thrifty Genotype, uh, where he focuses on Europeans, which is correct, rather than focusing on those who are not like us. So uh, this um, surface is where we are now, and we are those who made it. When uh, former traditional populations who have lived as hunter-gatherers transition to a modern lifestyle, they get the same diseases as we have. Uh, before that, they apparently don't have them. And after transition, it's the same diseases, only, as I said, a little bit more. So human physiology varies little by ethnicity. So we, we, there are, of course, uh, differences. Some of us uh, react in a slightly different way than others to Western foods. Uh, and uh, this is, of course, obvious. Uh, for example, uh, celiac disease. Not everyone gets celiac disease. Uh, but on the whole, we get the same kind of metabolic distances right. and Probably atherosclerosis is also a consequence of this uh, transition. Uh, salivary amylase activity also differs a little bit between ethnic groups, such that uh, those who have been eating starchy foods for a longer time have a slightly higher uh, salivary amylase activity. But uh, on the whole, the human species have a high activity compared to other primates, uh, suggesting that we are well adapted to a starchy diet. Uh, and uh, many people think that uh, one or two million years ago in Africa, when we were no longer the best <coughs> among the primates to, to uh, pick the fruits in the trees, and uh, not yet the best hunters compared to the, the big uh, cats, etc., we were clever enough to dig up roots and uh, perhaps uh, pretty soon to start using fire to make it even more uh, digestible. And of course those are <coughs> interesting differences, but the main point is that we as a human species react more or less in the same way. And if we want to understand why our most common diseases are absent, apparently absent in non-Western populations, we should not spend too much time on, the, on these uh, uh, differences, in my opinion. Okay, as I already said, we react in virtually the same way. <clears throat> Atherosclerosis is a general phenomenon. This uh, is seen in uh, most elderly Westerners. Uh, so you see in uh, autopsy studies uh, that uh, most people have fairly advanced atherosclerosis. And uh, we all agree this is a disease. Uh, so it's uh, strange that uh, so few um, scientists uh, thoroughly try to understand what could it be in the Western diet uh, and, of course, other factors as well, but diet is obviously the main driving force. Uh, uh, when you uh, go through the literature, as I have done since 1985, so the dietary shifts that shaped most of our genome happened more than 200,000 years ago. Another reason to consider evolution is that uh, plants. Uh, protect themselves. A plant cannot run away when we try to eat it. So it must protect itself in other ways by lots and lots of bioactive substances. Uh, so um, evolutionary uh, biologists working with plants, plant ecologists, uh, they are very well aware of, uh, of these defense mechanisms. Uh, and the highest concentration of 
problematic, uh, possibly um, harmful substances are of course found in the seeds or the beans, which is the next uh, generation of the plant. So um, there is more nature romanticism than you would ever imagine uh, in all this, uh, uh, well, these trends of uh, what are healthy foods, uh, etc. Uh, ripe fruit flesh has uh, quite logically a lower concentration of such substances. We as primates uh, help uh, fruit bearing trees to spread their seeds. Uh, and uh, the apple tree has no reason to try to uh, harm us, uh, uh, but uh, the, the seeds are uh, well buried inside and uh, slippery. Uh, so at least one uh, uh, seed could pass the w way and uh, perhaps uh, pref uh, preferably be swallowed so that uh, it can uh, get in fertile soil. And uh, uh, actually some substances in fruit flesh uh, speed up uh, transit uh, time uh, to, in order to see that the, the um, offspring of the, of the tree gets uh, not too far away from the mother plant because the mother plant apparently found a good place. Uh, so uh, a famous quote uh, here and many other times is in, uh, in uh, evolution, uh, sorry, nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution. Uh, Paleolithic diets, uh, foods that were consumed for two and a, two and a half million years ago uh, among our ancestors uh, were, as I said, wild fruits and berries, vegetables, roots, nuts, meat, organ meats, eggs, honey, fish, shellfish, insects, larvae, but not dairy foods, cereal grains, refined fat or sugar, and these now provide most of the calories in uh, Western countries. So this means a relatively low intake of each phytochemical. The, the, the total amount of phytochemicals can be high uh, when there are a lot of different vegetables, but uh, uh, each of them uh, is not consumed on a daily basis in high amounts, such as we now eat wheat or rice or uh, whatever. No added salt. Many different plant species. So variation, again, is a key issue here. The Kalahari Bushmen had 400 different plant species in their uh, diet on an annual basis. The proportions of meat versus plant foods is a common uh, discussion, but I think it's besides the point. Uh, sometimes it was much of uh, meat, sometimes very little meat. Uh, and uh, near vegetarian gatherers have uh, normal brain size, high fitness and no evidence of essential amino acid deficiency. So, uh, so th there are many misunderstandings uh, in these kind of discussions. The macronutrient composition also has varied very much. Sometimes high carbohydrate intake, sometimes low carbohydrate intake. And uh, among people today who have uh, been eating those kind of foods, and of course uh, uh, I'm aware that uh, they have had different lifestyles in other aspects too, but today we're talking about diet. So some of them have had a high carbohydrate diet others are low, but interestingly uh, there is, uh, are uh, strong indications to suggest that uh, cardiovascular disease, stroke, myocardial infarction, uh, high blood pressure, diabetes, um, overweight uh, have not been uh, present among such populations. And also what they have in common is that grains, dairy products, Refined fat and sugar were not part of the staple diet, just as for our ancestors. And one of those populations are the Trobriand Islanders that I studied uh, 20 years ago. 
The Trobriand Islands uh, are situated north of Australia in Papua New Guinea, so Kitava was one of those islands. So we have an island with um, 2,500 two inhabitants at that time. 6% uh, were older than 60 years. It's less than in uh, Western countries, but it, it's enough to compare uh, f food and uh, food-related uh, health. So they eat a lot of tubers. They have a very high carbohydrate intake. I will not go into the details of this, this study, but th there are other populations um, with high uh, intake of carbohydrate starchy foods, uh, which show uh, just uh, the same uh, uh, pattern of absence of Western disease, uh, absence of myocardial infarction, absence uh, of other cardiovascular disease. And this is... Um, um, uh, this has been well studied by two physicians, two uh, uh, German physicians uh, who have worked there for many years. They mainly uh, wrote papers or uh, just uh, treated patients uh, in other uh, areas, uh, but when you asked uh, them, they confirmed that uh, they had never seen uh, cardiovascular disease. And this is consistent with other studies in Melanesia. Uh, and the, the rest of the world where populations with food habits uh, similar to those of our uh, Paleolithic ancestors have not had myocardial infarction, and the same for stroke. Uh, yeah, this is consistent with other studies. When the British came to uh, East Africa, they did not see any cases of stroke. And then it emerged to be the, the most common neurologic disease in East Africa, parallel to a change in uh, lifestyle and uh, the emergence of hypertension, etc. And now Papua New Guinea sees the same thing. So this 47-year-old man has hemiplegia. He's in the hospital uh, in the main, uh, in the, the um, capital, in the mainland. And when you ask people in the city uh, about this new disease, they say, yeah, we think it's the diet, and I think they are right. We measured a lot of things. Uh, they have much lower uh, blood sugar, uh, no signs of diabetes. So the, the yellow ones are Sweden, and the red ones are Kitaba. Uh, fasting serum insulin is low, so each dot is uh, one Kitavan uh, with increasing age. Um, and uh, overweight is also absent. Here are the Kitavans, and here are Swedish uh, uh, women and men. If a Swedish man by the age of 50 would have the BMI, the body mass index of the Kitavans, uh, he would on average, weigh uh, 19 kilos more than he actually does, and 22 kilos is the difference for women. And then if we adjust for differences in fat percentage, uh, the difference is even higher. Uh, this is waist circumference. Uh, hypertension, high blood pressure is also absent. I will not go into all these details, but uh, it's, it's very striking uh, that, that Western disease is absent. And it's not because there are no elderly. There are enough elderly to uh, make it possible to compare them with us. And uh, other researchers have uh, made estimates of uh, the uh, average age at death for hunter-gatherers. Uh, you hear almost every day, well, they all died before they were 35. Uh, uh, so this is a kind of uh, general conception of uh, what it's like. You would have a lot of uh, infants walking around. Uh, they were born when their mother was 30, and then uh, two years later, they don't have any parents. It's, uh, I'm sorry, but it's a stupid uh, idea which has no scientific uh, foundation. Uh, average life expectancy at birth is lower, let's say 45, but uh, average life expectancy at age 45 might be the same as uh, in uh, Sweden. Our age estimates were based on historic events. Uh, I will wrap it up now. Uh, 
there are no indications of genetic resistance. And when uh, traditional populations transition, the whole distribution curve shifts to the right with regard to blood glucose or uh, blood pressure, etc. It's not just that some people uh, are affected. So, if you have a Western population, you divide people into low risk, normal risk or high risk people. And often you cut uh, the, the baseline, so you show it like this. Uh, so a physician tells his doctor, your blood pressure is normal, uh, meaning that your uh, risk is normal, but uh, a patient who has been blogging around may uh, think, uh, well, he doesn't want to be normal. This was actually the title of a, uh, an editorial I wrote for the European Heart Journal uh, a couple of years ago, commenting on the fact that if you measure blood pressure and blood lipids uh, in a normal Norwegian population, most of them would need medication. So the conclusion would be, well, there must be something wrong. Yes, there must be something wrong. So evolutionary theory is fundamental to biology. It should be fundamental to nutritional science as well. Nature is not benign. This is a quote from Ames, who made Ames test. I don't know if you young physicians know about it, but it was an old way to test different uh, substances if they could cause cancer in, uh, in, in, uh, in vitro. Uh, uh, and uh, Ames, he found out that many of the plant substances were certainly not benign. Common diseases may be caused by common foods. Okay. Thank you. I think my time is out. Maybe one minute for questions. But we will have uh, lots of time in the end for a discussion and for questions. Uh, we will focus on food choice in our uh, discussion uh, in the end. Okay. Thank you.